Hi there guys and welcome back to another episode of The Beard Necessities here on The Beard Solution. My name is Adam and in today's video I'm going to be talking to you about 10% minoxidil and whether it's worth upping to the higher dosage or not. So without further ado, let's take a look at 10% minoxidil. Yo, I done six shows in a row, so my voice is hurting. Fans wanna hear what you're in person. Boy, oi. She want a man from Brom, but she settled with a boy from Burton. I still see feds on a block, still see the boy them lurking. He thinks I'm a poisonous person. Inside the boyfriend's burning. There's too many keyboard warriors. So guys, I'm gonna try and be as concise as possible in this video but it is gonna be quite detailed as well because there's certain aspects that I'll need to cover with you that require me to explain it a little bit more in order to actually make my points relevant. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is actually whether or not minoxidil will be effective for you in general. So minoxidil um, actually works by being converted from minoxidil into minoxidil sulfate by a enzyme called sulfotransferase. Now, depending on the amount that you actually have in your body will depend on how responsive you will be to minoxidil. Obviously, if you have a very low amount compared to most people, then you're not going to be very responsive to minoxidil, if at all. If you have a higher amount or higher than the baseline amount required, the chances are that you are going to be responsive to minoxidil and the higher that enzyme is, also the likelihood would continue to say you get even better results the higher that enzyme goes, okay? Uh, or potentially a lot more unwanted hair growth, who knows? But generally speaking, it's that enzyme that's actually making it effective or ineffective for you. So in terms of uh, is 10% more effective than 5%, well, it's hard to say. 5% is shown to be much better than 2% and 3% and whatnot and all the other concentrations that are fall below it. Now. That shows that there is a dose dependency with minoxidil where the concentration does dictate better results. Uh, now I'll point out, and aside from that, talking about concentration here guys, not about the amount of times a day you apply. So applying more than twice a day is just gonna get you more side effects, it's not gonna get you more results. That has been shown and proven in studies, okay? That aside, I'm talking about concentration. Now a concentration of 10%, is it gonna be better? Well, there's no studies on 10%, so it's very hard to say, although logic would dictate that if 5% is better than 2%, then 10% would be better than 5%, right? Well, we also need to consider, again, that amount of, um, sulfotransferase enzyme, as I was talking about before, which is now relevant again. Uh, obviously, the higher amount that you have, the more uh, the more minoxidil you can metabolize in your body. So the uh, optimum amount is probably gonna vary from person to person. And it might be slightly higher than 5%, it might be um, slightly lower than 10%, it might be 10%, it might be more than 10%, who knows? Uh, if you do have any studies that show that it is at a particular level, do please share them in the comments. Uh, I'm unaware of any that explicitly state whether 5% um, is the optimum amount, but again, concentrations over that from what I found haven't really been studied anyway, so it's hard to say. A few things to consider around about 10% minoxidil is that minoxidil itself is made up, uh, I'm talking about the liquid here, of minoxidil at whichever concentration. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the 5%. It also has uh, alcohol and it also has propylene glycol, also has purified water. But I'm gonna talk about the other two inactive ingredients and ignore the water element of it. So the alcohol, minoxidil is actually only soluble in alcohol to around about 2.3%, I think, uh, and in propylene glycol only to around about 7.5%. So if you are getting 10% minoxidil, the likelihood is, in fact, it's, it's pretty much a given that it's gonna have other agents in order to keep that solution stable. And if it doesn't, then all you're actually having is most likely, uh, uh, at most, a 7.5% solution with minoxidil powder floating in the bottom of it. So in terms of the solubility of minoxidil, it is set at a certain level without additional agents. One of those ag uh, agents that might be used is something like azaleic acid, which is a DHT blocker as well, and we know that for the beard we should generally avoid them. Uh, not all 10% solutions might use a, a DHT blocker, although a lot from what I've looked at do. So in terms of whether minoxidil is safe or not, uh, obviously it's very hard to to say in terms of the 10%, 5% is shown to be safe uh, and it's FDA approved. Obviously for crown or balding, we're using it off-label for facial hair, um, but the 10%, the actual concentration itself isn't FDA approved, so we can't necessarily say that that is safe. So we are potentially taking a greater risk in using it. Uh, there's also more side effects that we'd have to consider. There's the likelihood that we'll have greater, more harsher side effects using a higher concentration. Um, 
how much harsher is hard to say, but if you're somebody that already has significant side effects on the 5%, I really wouldn't recommend you going and using the 10%. Uh, there's also the element of cost. It is significantly more expensive. I was looking online at um, some of the legitimate brands like Tugain and Mintop, which are out in India, uh, and they are probably the ones I would go for if you're looking to buy it, just because they are well-known brands and the likelihood is that they're going to be manufactured in a way that is safe. Um, not bottles that look like this with a new label stuck on the front. I really would avoid that. They're probably made by some home chemist who doesn't know what he's doing. Um, in terms of cost, it is more expensive. I was looking online um, in terms of the UK. The 10% is around about £18. Um, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, depending on where you, where you shop around on eBay. Um, in terms of uh, the 5%, it's actually only around about £6 for a bottle. So you can see it's about triple the cost. Uh, now it may vary uh, in your local area and it may vary where you are in the world, but generally speaking, it's, it's more expensive. Um, is it worth it? This is where I'm going to break from tact. Now, usually I would focus solely on the science, which would suggest that um, there is potentially the fact that 10% isn't going to be better than 5%. You're just going to get more side effects. There's got to be a limit to how effective minoxidil can be at each concentration. That being said, I really think it's up to you guys. I really, I would try it out if I were you, that if you've not seen any gains um, or you've seen very minimal gains and you're about seven or eight months in, why not give it a shot? You know, at least for a few months, I'd say you really need to give it a few months to know for sure that it is the 10% that's giving you the better results. But guys, like it's an experiment at the end of the day. We don't know everything. I don't know everything. You know, I like to read up a lot on this kind of stuff, but I'm by no means an expert. Um, I know people seem to look at as admins and everyone as experts. We just read up a lot on this stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean that we know 100% everything about th this kind of um journey you know we're still on it ourselves we're still learning ourselves so some of you may want to take the plunge yourselves even i am debating trying 10 percent. although i will let you guys know if i do decide to use it um i probably wouldn't share that until i've actually seen any significant results either way but i would say it's worth you guys looking into at the very least i will reiterate it's potentially dangerous um it is basically you going out on a limb and trying it i wouldn't necessarily recommend it but i wouldn't say don't give it a shot um, and overall, it's something to consider for yourself and to do some more research, uh, especially around the side effects. So guys, thanks very much for watching this video. If you did like this video, then please do hit that like button. If you want to keep up to date with videos on this channel, then please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any comments, questions, queries, or suggestions, pop them in the comments box below. I've been Adam at The Beard Solution, and I'll see you again next time. You don't rate me because I ain't got a blue tick, but I got one on the top and that gave me. I don't even know what's real.